Hello guys and welcome to the video. My name is Brandon uh, and today I'm going to be going over some of the best ETFs to buy for Canadians uh, because there's a ton of great information online. There's a ton of great YouTube videos on ETFs, um, but the vast majority of them... Reggie! Get out of there. Just don't go on the counter, Reggie. As I was saying, you know, there's a ton of great content online, a lot of videos on ETFs, but the vast majority of them are on US-based ETFs. And what do I mean by that? Um, well, you can have two identical funds and one would be the US version, meaning that it's traded on a US exchange and it's traded in US dollars. And then you'd have the Canadian version, right? Which would be traded you know, in Canadian dollars and on a Canadian exchange. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the top ETFs that you should know about as a Canadian. Um, I'm gonna look at four different ETFs, two that you absolutely do need to know about, and then two that are a little more fun, a little more uh, a niche. Um, so let's get into those right now. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So guys, uh, if you don't know what an ETF is, um, I apologize, not gonna be going into it in this video, uh, but I do have a separate video on this topic. Um, I'll link it in the description below. Go have a watch. Uh, but very simply, an ETF or an exchange traded fund is basically just a basket of assets. And, and you know, there's all kinds of ETFs that you could choose from, right? You have ETFs that invest in Canadian companies, you have ETFs that invest in healthcare companies and energy companies. I mean, there's really tons to choose from. Um, so let's just dive right into the first ETF for this video, and it is VFV, the Vanguard S&P 500 Index ETF. Now, this ETF right here is a staple in any investor's portfolio. I mean, if you are looking to invest the bulk of your money somewhere, you're trying to pick an ETF, this is it, all right? Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the S&P 500 Index is essentially the 500 largest companies in America. And what this ETF does is it, it attempts to replicate that index. Um, so we can have a look here at the objective for this specific fund. So the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF seeks to track to the extent reasonably possible, blah, 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 the performance of a broad US equity index. Uh, da, 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 da. In other words, <clears throat> this Vanguard ETF seeks to track the S&P 500 index. So like I said, this ETF is gonna be an exact replication of the S&P 500 index. And as you can imagine, and that's an awesome way to get exposure to the US markets or to get exposure to these US companies. Um, we can have a look here at the top 10 holdings in this specific ETF. Currently, we're looking at Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan Chase, ExxonMobil, Bank of America. All awesome companies, and of course, these are just the top 10 of 500 holdings. Whether you're a beginner investor or maybe you're a little more advanced, this is an awesome fund to invest in. Uh, you definitely want to have a good chunk of your money invested in you know, US companies or the US market. There's a ton of great American companies um, that you should be investing in, and this ETF is perfect for achieving that. Now, VFV currently has about $1.4 billion in net assets and has an MER of 0.08%. So very, very cheap, um, very typical of what you'd expect from one of these you know, broad index funds. Um, ETFs like this are very, very low cost and an awesome way to get a good level of diversification. I'd highly encourage you guys to go check out the fund, uh, read a little more on Vanguard's website. I will put a link here in the description below for you guys. Uh, but VFV is the first ETF that you should know about. Now, moving on to the second ETF for this video, we're gonna shift over uh, to the Canadian markets. We're gonna look at a Canadian ETF, um, and the ticker here is XIC, the iShares S&P TSX Capped Composite Index ETF. Now, iShares is actually the largest ETF provider here in Canada, uh, Vanguard being second, um, and we'll see the difference in size when we look at the net assets in a second. But this ETF seeks long-term growth by replicating the performance of the S&P TSX Cap Composite Index. And the TSX, of course, stands for the Toronto Stock Exchange Index. Uh, this ETF would be replicating that. So we can have a look at some of the companies that are included in this fund. Companies like Royal Bank, uh, TD Bank, Bank of Nova Scotia, Enbridge, Suncor, CNR, BMO, uh, you know, all of the big Canadian companies uh, are gonna be included here. And again, this ETF is a great way to get exposure to the Canadian markets. Now, an important thing to know with this ETF is the sector breakdown. And you know, whenever you invest in the Canadian index, one thing that you have to understand is that you're gonna be very heavily invested 
into really, you know, three main sectors. And here, you know, it's kind of looking like four. Uh, but the Canadian economy is very much concentrated within the financial sector. Um, you, of course, got the big banks and you know insurance companies. Uh, the energy sector is also very big. Um, you know the oil industry, of course, we can think out in you know Calgary how big of a part that is of the Canadian economy. And then you have the materials uh, sector, so things like copper and gold and uh, you know lumber. Again, big part of Canadian economy. Seeing how we are an export country, uh, so it's definitely something that you need to keep in mind. You may think that by investing in this ETF, well, hey, I'm getting a great level of diversification. Um, but in reality, you know, your investments are going to be pretty heavily skewed towards these three sectors. Um, and that's not to discourage you from investing in the Canadian markets, not at all. It's very important to invest both in Canadian stocks and U.S. stocks. Um, but typically, a lot of Canadians, they have a tendency to want to invest in their own country, right? They want to invest in Canadian stocks. It's actually a term called home bias. And what I'm saying is that, you know, if I had the choice to invest between the US market and the Canadian market, I'd likely lean towards the US market. I think that it's a far better market when it comes to diversification and growth. Uh, but like I said, ideally you'd have a mix of both. Now we can have a look here at some of the key facts for this ETF. Um, currently the assets are sitting at $4.1 billion. So like I said, you know, much bigger uh, than the Vanguard fund and the MER is at 0.06%. So as well, very, very cheap. I will link this for you guys in the description below. Now, moving on to the third ETF for this video, we're gonna go with HMMJ, the Horizons Medical Marijuana or Life Sciences Index ETF. Now, this bad boy right here uh, was actually the first marijuana ETF to ever hit the market. Um, it was launched not too long ago, back in uh, April of 2017. So still relatively new. Um, and of course, with the pod industry really just starting to you know, pick up some steam. Now, if you've been following along with my channel, I, I posted a video a couple weeks ago on why I'm personally, you know, not the biggest fan of this uh, industry at the moment. Um, but I still thought I'd absolutely should include this ETF. Uh, you know, the marijuana space is a very hot topic, and you know there are a lot of people that are very bullish uh, on this industry. And if that's you, um, I would definitely consider uh, taking a deeper look into this ETF. Uh, this is a very interesting way uh, to get exposure to this space. Um, you know, rather than you know, you know, picking one company, essentially placing your bets on uh, Canopy Growth or Aurora, just play the entire field. Um, and if uh, the marijuana space does as well as expected, um, this is likely going to be a, a great investment. We can have a look here at uh, some of the top companies included in this ETF. Uh, there's 30 companies in this ETF. Uh, of course, all the big players are going to be uh, included. Uh, companies like Aurora, Canopy Growth, uh, Medrelief, Afria, GW, uh, Canamed, I mean, they're all going to be included in this fund. But hands down, the most important reason why you guys should be investing in this ETF is because Horizons is the proud partner and sponsor of the Toronto Raptors. We the North, baby. We got to rep our boys. Uh, they're looking awesome this year. Uh, you know, maybe they're going to make a push for the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, who knows? Um, I'm totally joking, uh, but that is kind of cool. Now this fund, as I'm filming this video, has just about $730 million in net assets. Uh, again, a relatively new fund, and it has an MER of 0.75%. So substantially higher than the ones that we've just looked at. And this is very typical of what you'd expect when you get into more of a you know, specific or more of a niche fund. The more direct you get with a, with a managed product like an ETF or a mutual fund, you'd expect the fee to get higher and higher. Um, and, and a lot of people may be you know, turned off by this number uh, oh, it's too expensive, but you know, you can think of it. it. It's still, you know, more than half the price cheaper than an average mutual fund. Uh, so if you wanted to get access to all of these companies, um, it's just the price you got to pay. And to be honest, if I was, uh, you know, bullish on this industry, it's definitely something that I would personally consider. Now let's move on to the fourth and final ETF for this video uh, It's one of my personal favorites, um, being a younger investor, talk about why in a second, uh, but it is XEM the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets Index ETF. Now, this ETF is not for everybody. Um, it's definitely, you know, a higher risk fund, um, but assuming you had the risk tolerance for it, it's an awesome fund to invest in. We can have a look here. XEM seeks to provide long-term capital growth by replicating the performance of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. Now, the MSCI uh, Emerging Markets Index is an index that contains around you know, 850 stocks um, across 24 different countries, you know, in these emerging markets, um, you know, some of the countries like Brazil and India and Taiwan and China. 
And you know, personally, um, I'm very bullish. I'm a big fan of the the, the Chinese markets right now. Um, I think that you know, when it comes to technology, they're always one step ahead. Um, and you know, I'm a really big fan of some of the holdings in this ETF. Now we can have a look here at the top 10 holdings in this fund. Uh, currently, the top position is in 10 cent holdings, and you know, this is one of my favorite stocks. Um, one of my favorite stocks, period. All right, I'm not even talking here about Asian companies. I am a big fan of 10 cent. Um, Alibaba, another very popular stock at the moment. Uh, Samsung, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, another big one. Uh, companies like Baidu, uh, it's kind of like the Chinese Google. That's an, an, another very popular stock. Um, a lot of exposure to international growing companies uh, in this ETF. Now, let's look at a few very important numbers here. Um, we can look at some of the previous returns for the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. Um, so let's focus in on this left column. Um, and we can date back to 2004. The MSCI Emerging Markets Index was up 25%, then up 34%, up 32%, up 39% in 08, down 53%, up 78, up 18, down 18, up 18, negative two, negative two, plus 14, up 11, and up 37%. So extremely volatile, uh, as expected when you invest in the emerging markets, right? These markets are, are not yet developed. Um, they're not yet mature. Um, you know, a lot of these companies are growth-oriented companies. Um, so very volatile. Um, and like I mentioned, if you have the risk tolerance for it, um, it's definitely something I'd consider uh, taking a portion of your portfolio and investing in this ETF. Now, XEM currently has about $323 million in net assets and its MER is at 0.82%. So again, uh, quite high, but we can look at some numbers here. Um, the MSCI Emerging Markets Index over the past 17 years has had an annualized compound rate of return of 10.66%. Uh, that is an outstanding rate of return, uh, assuming you can handle the volatility. And you know what they say, right? High risk, high reward. So guys, uh, those are four ETFs, uh, four Canadian listed ETFs uh, that you should know about. We kind of covered off a few different sections, a few different types of ETFs. Um, and you know, before I end this video, if, if there's one piece of advice that I can give you, um, it's you know, don't get too caught up on you know the, the fees and, and the minor details. It's definitely something to be aware of, um, but I mean, you could literally spend hours uh, comparing these funds and saying, oh, you know, this one's a, a basis point cheaper, or, you know, this one's 10 year return is, you know, this much better. At the end of the day, what's important is, you know, choosing the right funds that line up with your risk tolerances and that are gonna help you achieve your specific, you know, financial goals and objectives. Over the long run, I mean, really, whether you decide to go for a Vanguard fund or an iShares fund, you know, the, the results you're gonna get are, are pretty similar, right? Um, if they're investing in the same underlying companies, you know, don't get too caught up about, oh, this one's much cheaper or whatever. Um, you know, it's not something to worry about so much. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, uh, be sure to give it a like. And if you wanna learn more about investing and the stock market, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're already subscribed, man, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.